Welcome back to this six part tutorial series on Serato Studio with myself, Jamie Hartley. If you haven't watched the first video, then go back and watch that now. In this second video, we're going to be taking that same project that we worked on, beefing it up, adding our own drums. And this is the first instance in producing your own music. We're going to be layering some drums down and working with scenes in Serato Studio. This is a really good stepping stone into working with your own sounds and producing your own music. So without further ado, let's get stuck in and start working on building out some scenes and some drums to improve the intro and the outro of this project. We're starting this lesson back in the AJ Tracy West 10 project from the previous video. Now, in the previous video, we basically extended the intro using some instrumental sections and making it more, more useful to us as a DJ. But to even make it more useful still, we might want to add some drums because at the moment, there aren't any drums at the start. So this introduces us to the world of music production and getting started as a music producer because we're going to need to create some of our own drums. Serato Studio make this really, really simple. This is definitely the simplest way to get started as a music producer. Until now, we've been working with audio, but above the audio in the track view, we have scenes. And if we click scenes, you'll notice the top half of the software switches out to the scene viewer. Scenes are almost a way to program things like drums, samples, instruments to then add to your song. And scenes, you can, you can make multiple scenes. So you could have a scene that is an intro, a scene that is the main section, a scene that is just the melody. Um, and this comes down to as you start building your project file up, you'll start to build up the scenes that you want to add to your project as well. Now, just like the clips in the previous video, when we're working with audio, we also have access to straight away to loads of different drum sounds on the left hand side. On the right hand side, we have the scene viewer and this is a sequencer ultimately and it's already loaded with a drum kit in here. Now I've got the Club 909 drum kit. You can choose different ones by swiping to the library and then going in the drums tab here. And there are loads of drum kits already available within the Serato Studio software. You could choose something like an 808, Club 808 or Club 909. I'm going to stick with the Club 909 drum kit, but if you want to drag a new one in, you can simply just drag it up and it will overlay over the top. So let's go 909 again. Make sure you drag it here and not here because that will create a whole new drum kit in that scene. Now, how to create a drum pattern? Well, Serato Studio actually have loads of pre-programmed drum patterns loaded in. And it's as simple as just pressing this button here, make a random beat. If I click this and press play just above, straight away we've got a pre-programmed drum loop. This is great when you're just starting out because you might not be sure where to lay down drums on this sequencer. We have one bar in length here and we can lay down all these blocks by clicking in an empty block or clicking on a block to make it disappear. And you can program lots of different sounds and drums in. But by using the pre-programmed beats, we can really quickly make these DJ edits and intros that we want to do to make our library more useful. So you could simply just press play and toggle through a few different beats and see what you like. If you want to stick to a specific, specific genre, we can use the drop down here and choose something like house and techno, for example, and then press it again. And we get a very typical house or techno loop. This is really useful. And it's great that you can just toggle through and find different genres and different styles of drum pattern. Because when you're first starting as a producer or getting into music production, you can spend hours just figuring out where to lay down drums. So having these pre-programmed makes it super useful. I'm just gonna go on random beat and toggle through a few different ones to see which one I might think works well on this project. So I quite like this, it's got a bit of a housey garage vibe just like the AJ Tracy song does. At the moment, however, it's only one bar long. We can double this by clicking the plus to make it two bars, four bars, eight bars, or we can go down. I'm going to just make it four bars long. Now a really 
cool hack that I think with Serato Studio is if I were to just delete all of these by pressing Command and A and then delete, if I've got four bars already loaded and press random B, it adds variations as well. So have a listen. So straight away, it sounds more interesting than before because the technology inside Serato Studio has figured out that we're four bars in length and on the fourth bar, they've added a few extra drums to make it sound more interesting when we add it to our project. So I quite like that drum beat. Now, if I go back to song view, you'll notice that the uh, intro block is already here. You can just simply drag down these scenes onto your timeline to extend the intro out. And as I drag them down, you'll notice that then when we play it, it plays both the audio underneath and the scenes. In this scene, all we've done is created a basic drum beat and we've done this just by using the inbuilt drum samples. That's how quick it can be to add some drums to your project. Now you'll notice when we get towards the end of the intro, we've got these drums coming in from the original song here. Boom, boom. And the drums we've created kind of clash. So just to introduce you to multiple scenes and how to create a variation in the drums, I'm going to simply copy this scene to a new one and you can either copy the scene across so it's got all the same information or start with an empty scene now if i copy it across and work on scene two i could simply delete the drums out of bars three and four which are these bars here and here if i drag this down you'll see now i've got intro and scene two i could rename it as intro variation so that we can keep track of what's what. Now in bar three and bar four, all I need to do is delete these drums because they have been replaced by the original song. By holding shift, I can then use the crosshair to drag over the drums, press delete. On four, using shift, use a crosshair, drag over and delete. So you'll see they're still there in bars one and two, but not in three and four. Let's play this from the start and listen to our new intro edit with drums. And that works really well. Now, the last thing I need to do to this project is something called sidechain. So sidechain is an effect that you can apply to the audio. And what this does is ultimately it ducks down the audio of the song whenever the kick comes in. Because just like when we're DJing, we don't want to have both low end EQs up at the same time. When we're mixing, we don't want the low ends to clash with each other. So what we can do is just make room in the audio for this nice, strong, punchy kick to come through and not muddy up this mix when we've added new instruments and new elements to the audio that's already there. So to do this, we need to open up the effects panel by toggling this on you'll see effects come up. Now the effects, there are two sides, the left-hand side and the right-hand side. The left-hand side will affect any individual thing. Like if I click on snare, you'll see that changes here. Or hi-hat, it changes here. And we can apply effects to any of these. And straight away, there's already pre-programmed ones. For example, on hi-hat, I could decide to add some delay. And this is at a quarter beat. So straight away, turn it off. put modulated LPF on, it changes how the drums sound. And again, it's just making it really simple for us to get started in the world of music production because there's so many things already pre-programmed and thought out. On the right hand side, we can affect the entire scene. So we could affect the entire Club 909 drum kit, for example. And if I put on something like drums reverb and turn it up, and you can hear the reverb. Now I'm not going to put any of this on for now. All I want to do is add a side chain. So straight away, if I click on the audio, 
the effects change. We've got clip four, which are these clips, and that changes. So if I wanted to just affect one of these clips, it's on the left-hand side. But on the right-hand side is our entire audio channel. So use the drop-down menu. We've got loads of effects here. All I'm interested in doing is going to sidechain. I'm going to do a soft sidechain. And then you can double check, but if I click this button here, it should have already selected the kick drum in the 909 drum kit. So it knows that's what it wants to sidechain to. It's kind of a rule of thumb when it comes to music production is to sidechain things to the kick drum in your drum rack. All I need to do now is turn it up. So if I play it and turn it up at the same time, you should hear the audio track drop down a little bit every time the kick comes in. Let's go really extreme. Now, I don't want to go that extreme. I want to go somewhere about halfway. Maybe a bit more. And it just helps the levels of the song and the levels of the new drums and the audio work together, ready to export. It just sounds much cleaner and much nicer. So whenever you're creating new drums for your intro edits, just add that side chain to the audio and it will just clean up that intro massively. The last thing that I want to do now that I've added my side chain is to basically duplicate my intro to create an outro because if I just show you the end of this song, it finishes very abruptly. And there's not much to work with for our mix out either. So again, I want to make this useful for when it comes to mixing out into the next song. This is really simple. I can just literally copy and paste what I've done at the start to the end. Now, if I just zoom out, I'm going to use Command and Minus. You can use this button here. I can see my entire waveform now. And all I want to do is select the first two sections. And by holding the Option button on a Mac, or I think it might be Alt on Windows, I can click and drag right to the end. Straight away, it's duplicated it. And I'm going to do that again to make 16 bars at the end. Let's have a listen. so useful just simply drag and drop just remember the option key or i think it might be alt on windows to ultimately duplicate what you've got selected and drag it somewhere new and if i really wanted to make it even better i'd delete the scene here and drag in the variation just to highlight the vocal at the end And there we go. All that's left to do is export this song. Click on the master, click on export song, export, and then maybe name this one drum intro. So straight away, I hope that's inspired you to go and add some drums to some of the music that you play in your set, maybe beef up some of the music that you're currently mixing, and just really experiment with scenes in Serato Studio. Remember, you can use the code CROSSFADER via the link below to get two months free of the full suite of Serato Studio. And I hope to see you in the next video where we're going to be taking an acapella and this same project and creating an acapella intro. We're also using wordplay in it and we're going to be adding a lot more into this project. This is still with the free version of Serato Studio. So I can't wait to show you what I've got lined up next. Make sure to click the next video and I'll see you inside. Thanks for watching.